Hello YouTube! Today we finish and test the ESP8266 Mini Aquarium Controller. Last time, we developed the software and mocked it up on a breadboard. Now we put together the permanent build and test it in the real world. Since I know I'll build several of these, and since it's inexpensive and easy nowadays, I decided to have some PCBs made up. As long as JLPCB keeps their $2 for 10 boards going, it's hard to justify going any other way. So. First we went out to Easy EDA and designed the board. Since I already have the connectivity all worked out on the breadboard, it's not very difficult. I want this board to house the ESP8266, the real-time clock, LEDs, resistors, and some filter caps, and the connectors for the DS18B20 power and relays. I also designed in some options to use more relays instead of two of the LEDs if I decide to. By making them 90 by 50 millimeter, I can get two on each panel, giving me 20 for $2. Check all your nets, make sure you have everything connecting as you want, then order them. If you can fit more than one in the 100 by 100 footprint, make sure to panelize. Then order away, it took about a week for them to arrive. I already have all the connectors and components needed, but if you need any of those parts, this is a good time to order those also. Once the PCBs came in, it was time to solder them up. Start with the small components, resistors and LEDs. Then finally the connectors. I'm a big fan of using blue tack to hold the components in place while soldering. Once it was all soldered up, I have to make the connector cables. That was covered back in part 3 of my main controller series. Then mount the ESP in real time clock, a quick test with USB power to make sure it's all working as desired, and we can put it in an enclosure. I was gonna make an acrylic box for this, like I did for the main controller, but while cleaning I came across this old router housing that'll work just as well, with a little paint and a few extra holes. So, I mount my PCP in the front with the USB port for the ESP facing out and accessible in case I ever need to reprogram it. The LED lights should also be visible through the holes in the front panel. The outlet is mounted on the top, and the relays and power supply fit just to the left and the right of the outlet mounted on the bottom. With it all attached to the enclosure, I connect all the components in the power lines, taking particular caution with the AC components, making sure the relays switch the hot line, rather than the ground. This is wired nearly identical to the relays and outlets shown in part 5 of my DIY controller series. I do a careful and quick bench test with it like this, and then button it up for the final install, after marking the heater outlet so I can easily tell which one is for the heater and which is for the light. Now that our device is built, let's put it in and see how it works. I have my tablet here accessing the website on my Pi. I navigate to the page for this controller and activate the light interrupt. There's a 10 second delay before the controller pulls the sight and sees the change. But then the lights go out, as they're supposed to. On the website, you can see the current status, which updates every 10 seconds or so. I've had this up and running for a few weeks now, and it's working perfectly. And the temperature stays much more stable than when using the built-in thermostat on the heater. And there we go! I hope you can use some of this in a project of your own. If you like this project and you want to see more like it, please click like and subscribe. It lets me know that these videos are worth making. And until next time, thanks for watching.